It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you for joining us today on the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's Schools that has been going on for this, our 35th year, where we have some of the best of the best students here showing their scientific knowledge. Play along and see how many of them you could get as well. Of course, things are different. Because of the pandemic, we are doing our show now on Zoom. All of our students are safe in their homes. Some things have not changed, though. Uh, we are still giving each team 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. And we also have the same categories that we normally do. And if you don't watch our show regularly, these are the six categories of questions that we use. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Something else that is different, we don't have buzzers here, so each of these teams will be getting 18 questions. We have Fort Foot playing today and Longfields. 18 questions apiece, but different, but comparable in difficulty. And uh, we're about to start. Let's meet our first team. They hail from Fort Foot Elementary School. And Chase, would you wave to everybody, please? We have Chase Brown out there, the captain of the team. Sloan Larkin is with us. Hey, Sloan. Uh, I like that wave. And how about Zoe Palmer? Zoe, looking good out there. Zoe waved to everybody. Terrific. All right. If you girls are ready, let's begin. Here are your first three questions from the category Green Things. Green things for five points. Former First Lady Michelle Obama's vegetable garden, you may remember that she planted a garden back at the White House, featured spinach, kale, lettuce, and chard, all of which are known as leafy what's. Oh, what do you think? Leafy greens? Leafy greens? Yeah, I think it's Nice and loud so we can hear you. Leafy what? Leafy greens. Leafy greens. You got it. That's the way to start this game. You got your five points. Keep it up. Multiple choice for 15 points. The Japanese art of pruning a tree's branches and roots to keep them miniaturized and alive sometimes for over a century. Is that known as borzoi, bionics, or bonsai? Your choices are borzoi, bionics, or bonsai, Japanese art of pruning trees, branches to keep them miniaturized. Itty bitty trees that are over 100 years old. What do you think? Do you think so? Um, um, I kind of didn't really hear the question. Okay, I'll, let me read the question for you. Some of you have seen little miniature trees. They're only about this big, but they're over 100 years old. There's a Japanese way of doing that where they trim the branches, they trim the roots, and it keeps it very small. There's a name for that process. Is it called borzoi, bionics, or bonsai? Which one do you think? Go ahead. Keep, no, no, no. keep, no, no. keep, no, no. keep your no, no. mics open. Don't keep turning your mics on and off. Keep your mics open. All right. So, Chase, what's your answer? Um, I'm going to say um, the first one. The first one, Borzoi. Borzoi is actually a kind of dog. The correct answer is bonsai, B-O-N-S-A-I. 25 oh. points in green things. Just like animals, just like us, plants, too, have something called a circadian rhythm, C-I-R-C-A-D-I-A-N, a circadian rhythm, which means... Plants have adapted to the earth doing what? 
What does the earth do all the time that plants and animals have to adapt to? Something called their circadian rhythm. What does the earth do? It spins on its axis once every 24 hours. So we know when to go to sleep. We know when to get up. We know when to go to the bathroom. We know when to eat. Our bodies, like plants' bodies, have a rhythm called the circadian rhythm. Some of you might have seen commercials about that where uh, it's called 24-7, I believe it is. People who have lost their sight, blind people who don't, can't see light, it helps them to keep up that circadian rhythm so they know when to sleep and get up and do all those things. Let's go to the zoo. To keep from being eaten, animals like rabbits and mice and other prey animals are constantly playing this as a football team does when they don't have the ball. Defense, that's it. Zoe got it. They're playing defense. When they've got the ball, the quarterback, that's on offense. Nice answer. Good. Got yourself five points. I like how you're listening. Let's do 15 points in the zoo. After nearly 100 years of looking for these, scientists fitted these snake-like fish with monitors and followed them to the part of the ocean known as the Sargasso Sea, where, yes, that is where they reproduce. Shocking news about what shocking snake-like fish. Um, I'm going to say electric eels. Electric eels, that's it. Two in a row. Let's go for three. I have a picture for you. This is beautiful. Look at this bird. This beautiful male painted bunting. People saw one of these in Virginia just about a month ago. It's so much more colorful than the female of the species. That's often the case with birds. It's known as this P-initialed dimorphism. This P-initialed word is another name for feathers. What is the P-initialed word that is another name for feathers? Starts with the letter P for 25 points. You've probably heard of this before. It's called plumage. Plumage. The plumage is another name for the feathers. Let's try your three body system questions before you take your first break. All right. The chances are one in 64,000 million that these body identifiers made up of different ridges and arches and loops and whorls are the same as somebody else's. We all have what? that nobody else has that helps to identify us. Fingerprints, fingerprints. The ridges and the whorls and all the different patterns there. Fingerprints. Um, yeah, the correct answer there was fingerprints. Let's try the 15 point question. It's been discovered that the number of bumps on your tongue determine how well you can taste this taste that often causes you to uh, recoil when you're taking medicine because medicine can be very what? Of the four basic tastes, which one is associated with medicine that tastes bad? Bitter. Bitter, that's right, good for 25 points in the body system category. It's your last one before we take a break. You're doing well. When you're in the gym with people who are huffing and puffing and sweating, you're exposed to something called acetone in their breath and the amino versions of these in their sweat. Amino is A-M-I-N-O. Amino what's that come out in people's sweat? Any ideas, girls? Finish the, finish the term. Amino is, describes kinds of what? Have to be kinds of chemicals. Sweat. Amino acids. Amino acids. You might have heard of amino acids. Those are the building blocks of proteins. So you end the first round with 90 points. All right, keep it up in the second half. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. Talk to you about yourselves and your schools.
it is now time to meet the team from Longfields Elementary School. Would you all please say hello to James? James waved to everybody at home. Hey, James, love that backdrop. And Jared is here. Hey, Jared, wave to everybody. And Nyla, everybody at home wants to see you wave too. Go ahead, Nyla. Thank you. All right. It's now time for your first three questions in the category called Green Things. If you're ready, here we go. Five points in Green Things. While President Obama famously hated to eat beets, President George Herbert Walker Bush despised these stocky, cruciferous vegetables that look like little trees. What did President Bush hate to eat? I believe so something about, yeah, yeah I'm going to go with broccoli, because broccoli. 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 broccoli has a little top. Broccoli, that's right. Give, me, give yourselves a thumbs up. Thumbs up, you got it. Thanks, Thanks Nala. 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 That's it, good. All right, 15 points. This vegetable, often used to demonstrate capillary action when a teacher puts red food dye in a dish, and you can see it move up, is featured in a TV ad for peanut butter, which this vegetable goes pretty well with. Celery. Celery, that's it. Thank you so much. <coughs> Jared, give yourself a thumbs up, all of you. Two in a row. Good. Let's go for three, for 25 points. One of the recommendations to avoid getting a common cold in the winter, made by a Nobel prize winner called Linus Pauling was to get more vitamin C or citric acid in your diet. For 25 points, name a fruit that could help you do that. Orange. Orange. More vitamin Orange. C or Orange. citric acid. Oranges. 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 Oranges or grapefruit or lemons or limes. You got yourself 25 points. You are perfect so far. Perfect. Thumbs up. Good. Let's go to the zoo. Got a picture for you. Let's look at this picture. Although these are called flying squirrels, bats are the only true flying mammals. The squirrels, they just do this. Glide. glide. They glide. That's a glide. glide. My, 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 my mic wouldn't let me do you. My mic wouldn't let me do you. Your mic wouldn't let you do what? Don't. don't. It, it wouldn't let me do you. Wouldn't let you, you, you should just it. Okay. stay unmuted. Yeah. yeah, we showed you a picture of a flying squirrel, and of course they don't fly, they, they glide as you told me, and you got those five points. Yeah, 15 points. The most destructive stage in an insect's metamorphosis is typically this stage when it eats almost constantly. Uh, caterpillar? No, caterpillar no, 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 that's a type of bug. What stage in metamorphosis? I'll give you the <gasps> picture you tell me. I know you know I think this. It's right before the cocoon. Uh, I forgot. I know you've heard of larva. A larva. Yeah, larva. Oh, oh, right. right. It's, it's right, right before the cocoon. That's what cocoon. it was, Mr. Z. That's what it was. All right. Get this next one. Okay, While okay. athletes have taken to wearing Under Armour clothing, beneath their uniforms. You've probably seen it says Under Armour. Arthropods, like insects, they don't need to wear Under Armour because they have Over Armour known as this. The cocoons? Uh, the, 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 what do you think? Uh, it, it's like a cocoon, maybe, but, but it didn't say about a specific, specific stage. stage. Or anything, or anything, he just, he just said, said it has to permanently. permanently. This is permanent. They're over yes. armor. Yes. You have an insect, any kind of arthropod, it doesn't need under armor because it has protection on the outside. We're, I'm going to call it over armor. What's its real name? Uh, I, think I think it's... I don't know. Correct answer there is exoskeleton. An oh. exoskeleton. Oh, an ex outside. The exoskeleton. Oh. That's like their over armor, yeah? Yeah, so they're not going to go to the store to buy anything under armor. They're, they're already set for the world. Let's go to the body systems. Your last three questions before we take our first break. While there are no optical nerves in the rear of your brain, every child, every one of you knows that your mother has these 
in the back of her head. Eyes. Eyes, that's right. You can't get away with anything, can you? You can't get away with anything. How did she know that? I've got eyes in the back of my head, all right? You know that, don't you? All right. Yeah. Here's body systems for 15 points. These body cells, which need to be replaced on a regular basis, and are the only ones that we have without a nucleus inside, are known scientifically as erythrocytes, but more familiarly as these kinds of cells. It's either, it's either red cell cells or white, or white blood cells. Yeah. All right, which one do you want? Red blood cells is right. <laughs> you got it, 15 point. Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, one more question before you take your break. You know, some boys have a toy called a G.I. Joe. G.I., when referring to G.I. Joe, stands for General Issue Soldier. But a doctor, a doctor interprets G.I. differently. G.I. for a doctor stands for gastro what? What is the I? Interface. Not interesting. No. I'm, 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 I'm more used. Here's, here's one thing about GI. GI. I'm, more I'm more used, used to GI, GI view, which, which is GUI, which, which is general, is general user, user interface. interface. I have no idea what about it with doctors. With doctors. The, the, the I here is intestinal. Gastro. Intestinal. Oh, oh, that sounds that, 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 that makes, makes sense. sense. I track. Yeah, it does make sense. I like how you play the game, all of you. You guys have a wonderful score. 120 points after the first run. Take a little break. We'll bring you back, talk to, yourself, talk to you about yourselves and your schools, and give you your next nine questions. Nice work. All right, it's now time to bring back the team from Fort Foot and find out a little bit more about our players here. Let's go to Chase. Chase, tell me a little bit about yourself, if you would, please. Why did you want to play this game? Um, I've done it before. You've done so it before. Again. Nice to have you back. Nice to have you back here. So uh, what is it about the game that you like? I like, I like how it, it brings you, brings you up, up in my system. That's right. There are a lot of science facts, and you're obviously a good science student. Uh, you know a lot of information, and we're able to, to hear about all that when you're here representing your school. What do you want to do someday, Chase? Have you thought about a career? Yeah, yes. I want to be a pediatric surgeon. Pediatric surgeon? Yeah, yeah. Pediatric surgeon? Yes. yes. That's wonderful. So you'll be working with little children. And you're going to need a lot of patience and a lot of education yet. But uh, something tells me you're disciplined enough and you're going to be successful. Keep up your good work. Let's talk to your teammates here. Let's go to, uh, let's see who else is with you. Sloan. Sloan, come on up and talk to us. Hey, Sloan. How did you prepare for being on the Science Bowl? Uh, well, we would be in science class. answering questions and watching the past. Uh, science, science school videos. videos. That's wonderful. Uh, tell me what it is that you like about science. Um, I like how, how when, when you actually think about, about it, it, it makes sense. sense. Then, then that, when you, you would first see it, you didn't, you didn't really, really know what it means. That's exactly right. Science can explain so many things and you think about our ancestors that believed in dragons and thought the earth was, uh, you'd fall off the edge if you went to the, uh, sailed on the ocean. So, yeah, science is, uh, science is something we should really respect. Uh, tell me about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I like to read. Yeah, that's great. And uh, someday, what do you see yourself doing? Well, I would, I would first say, say doctor, doctor but... I don't, I don't really know. No, you're so young yet. You have a lot of opportunities yet to really uh, home in on what you really like and what you're good at and what you want to do for the rest of your life. Keep up your nice work here. Good to have you on the show. Let's talk to your teammate here. Let's bring in Zoe. Zoe, nice to have you on the show here. Tell us why you wanted to be on this show. Um, I don't know. Kind of awkward, but I didn't really know it. Did someone um, did someone ask you to do this or did you volunteer? Uh, I was asked to do it because I never thought about it really. Yeah, but we're glad you're here today. And Zoe, uh, um, you were taught. Uh, some of your teammates want to be doctors. P 
pediatric surgeon and a doctor. How about you? Um, like to be an alligator or a zoologist. Ah, that's why your team did so well in the zoo parade questions here. Yeah, you know your animals. Nice to have you with us. All right, it is now time, Fort Foot, for your last nine questions in the categories Let's Get Physical, Science, Potpourri, and Dateline. So if you're ready, here is your Let's Get Physical question for five points. How many of you have seen the Lion King movie? Put your hands up. This is a Lion King movie question. When Pumbaa, the warthog in the Lion King movie, broke wind and cleared out the water hole with its stench, he was releasing this M-initialed gas. Have you ever heard of methane? Methane is a gas. Cows produce it too when they release uh, break wind. For 15 points, there's hope that one day we'll be able to recharge our cell phones while they're in our pocket. The rubbing of crystal enhanced fibers will generate small amounts of electricity. Just by walking along, your cell phone is gonna have those crystals and it's gonna generate electricity that can be measured in the units MW. MW stands for micro what? Micro watts. Say it again, please. Micro watts. Micro watts it is. Good for 15 points. Ex excellent. Give yourselves a thumbs up. Give yourself a thumbs up. That's right. You're cooking. I want to see a little more smiles. You look too serious. Here's your last one. 25 points and let's get physical. The I initial term for a different form of the same chemical, an isotope, is also the name of Springfield's baseball team on The Simpsons. How many of you have seen The Simpsons ever? Have you ever seen The Simpsons cartoon? All right. The Springfield, Springfield is the name of the town on The Simpsons, and their baseball team is called the Isotopes. That makes a lot of sense because Homer, the guy who stars on The Simpsons, works in a nuclear power plant where the isotopes that are produced are in this dangerous R-initialed state. Radioactive? Radioactive. 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 Absolutely right. Nicely done. Nicely done. 25 points. Pat on the back time. Pat on the back time for, for our team there from Fort Foot. All right, let's go to Potpourri for five points. There is arithmetic in your math class. And then there's the branch mathematics that uses letters and symbols in the place of numbers. This is a multiple choice, like solving for x. Is that kind of mathematics algebra, trigonometry, or calculus? I'm going to say algebra. It is algebra. Absolutely right. Good. Algebra it is. For 15 points, you guys are doing well. Because clothing that's made purely of cotton fibers, it wrinkles. You know, you take it out of the washer and it's all wrinkled. Well, many no iron articles of clothing today have polyester fibers woven in with the cotton. Polyester is a kind of this artificial substance that is currently polluting our lakes and rivers and oceans because we use it to make so many things like disposable water bottles. Name that substance. Say it again. Plastic. Plastic is right. That's right. Plastic is correct. Good. All right, I have a picture for you for Pope Brief for 25 points. Let's look at this picture. I don't know if you ever had a hermit crab as a pet, but they're really neat. Hermit crabs, which people keep as pets, are crustaceans. But to survive, they have to go out and find shells from this M initial group of organisms in order to protect their vulnerable bodies. What's that M initial group of creatures that makes the shells that the hermit crabs have to borrow? Mammals? Say it again, I talk louder. Mammals? Not mammals, no, mollusks. Mollusks, like clams and, and, and snails, things that have shells. Last three questions in the game for you come from Dateline Science. Dateline for five points. 
Alexander Fleming famously discovered the first ever antibiotic purely by accident when he saw that bacteria wouldn't grow on some mold in a petri dish, a little glass dish. That mold was what kind of organism belonging to the same group as mushrooms? Mushrooms are a kind of what? Fungi. Fungi, you got it. You got it. Nicely done. Nicely done, Chase. All right, next question for you is Dateline for 10 points. Let me find that one for you. Here it is. Admiral Grace Hopper, she was in the Navy. She helped revolutionize computer technology in this country, and she's the subject of a book. Of a book. It's called The Queen of Computer What? What C-initialed word that a lot of you are learning to do on the computer? Uh, is it coding? Coding is right. Thank you, Zoe. She is the queen of computer coding. Last question in the game for you, 25 points. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, the coronavirus, it's horrible. Probably the worst ever pandemic though, occurred way back in the 1400s, thought to have killed one out of every four people that was alive then, imagine that. The plague, or the Black Death as it was called, was caused by a bacterium that was spread by these wingless, blood-sucking insects that can't see very well, but have large hind legs for jumping. Um, do you guys think? I think this is crickets. What do you think it is? Do you guys think it's mosquitoes? Not a cricket. Not a cricket. Correct answer there are fleas. Fleas, blood-sucking insects, and you know they jump. They have huge jumping power, so they could jump from animal from person to person. Well, we're animals too. So fleas was the right answer there. Nice try. So you finished the game with 170 points. You did a very nice job. Give yourselves a thumbs up. Before we ask any more uh, scientific questions, a few personal ones of that team from Longfields. Let's go to their captain, James. James, nice to have you on the show. How do you know so much science? Because you do. So, so I enjoy. Science, 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 science experiment, experiments. experiments. I, once I once did a, a volcano, volcano experiment, experiment with, with, um, with baking, baking soda, soda and I believe vinegar. vinegar. That's exactly right. Did you and make a nice mess? <laughs> um, um, I, I had a little tote on my table, so. so. We, we I also, also enjoy, enjoy space. space. That's, That's why I have the backdrop. backdrop. I enjoy space. My, my dream, dream job is going to be an astronaut, but before that, that I want to be an Air Force pilot. pilot. Oh, you have it all planned out. I really Thank admire you what a mature young man here. You know, you know where you want to go. We can see where you want to go. We want to see. Would you like to go to Mars someday or to the space station? I would, I would enjoy, enjoy that. that. I mean, I don't care as long as I get into space. Oh, you're great. You're just great, James. Keep it up. Keep up your good work and uh, hold to that dream. You're going to get it. Let's talk to your teammates here. Let's go to Jared. Jared, come on up and talk to me for a minute, if you would. Jared, you know you've been playing such a good game out there, and you know an awful lot about science. How do you know so much science? So, so my parents are scientists, and they're always talking about it, and sometimes they quiz me on some of the stuff. So I also enjoy the elements of science, so I try with science. It's obvious. It's obvious that you're, you're a curious young man. Curiosity about the world really is what you need to be. You're taking in a lot of information. Uh, what do you hope to do someday? Your, uh, your captain wants to go into space. What would you like to do? Personally, I would be a singer. You'd like to do what? I think, I think I'd, I'd be a singer. singer. Ah, all right. Well, that, that's also a wonderful goal. And uh, just to keep up your good work in school, even though you're doing it remotely, and I know that's a challenge, and uh, I admire all of you for doing as well as you're doing at home there. And good luck in the second half here. Thank Let's thank talk you. to your other teammate. You're welcome. Let's talk to your teammate. Let's bring up uh, Nyla. Nyla, do you like doing this? Yes. Yeah. Why did you want to be on the show? Because I, uh, I like science. That's the, that's the primary reason. If you like I, I science... Know. You're in the right place. You're right place. Did uh, did your coach choose you? Did Miss Bear choose you, or did you volunteer? I was chose. 
That's no. Well, she chose well because she has a good eye for talent, and you're playing a good game. What do you hope to do someday, Nyla? Be an author. An author? Wow. Do you write now? Have you written any books or poems? I haven't written any books, but I have a lot of ideas. That's wonderful. Ideas are... I can only write short stories. Yeah, yeah, you have to start out that way. Sometimes people start by writing magazine articles or newspaper articles, and they, they build up, they build up. You're going to be wonderful, uh, a literate young lady. Thank you, Nyla. All right, let's get back and start asking you some questions again here. We'll get you all back here, that team from Longfields. And if you're ready, here are your last nine questions. Y'all set, guys? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. Of the four forces in the universe, the best known isn't electromagnetism or the weak force between nuclear particles or the strong nuclear force. Of the four forces in the universe, the best one known is this one that keeps us from floating away. Gravity. Gravity is right. You got it. 15 points. Something that undergoes spontaneous combustion or oxidation does what? Like Something yes. that undergoes spontaneous combustion does what? Mold. Combustion or oxidation means burning. It's something that bursts into flames. It just starts to, to, uh, on fire. A lot of times that happens in grain silos on farms where they store grain. Sometimes there are explosions in there and it starts to burn on its own. Here's the 25-point question, and let's get physical. It is a visual. Have a look at this picture, Longfields. Almost looks like something out of Harry Potter. The ancient practice of alchemy, as you can see here, which was more magic than science, was the attempt, attempt made by people who were trying to turn basic and largely inexpensive metals into this metal with a chemical symbol AU. Some, some of you said you studied the periodic table. What chemical has the chemical symbol AU? People, alchemists, were trying to turn simple, basic, inexpensive metals into this. Gold. Say it again. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't know if I'm wrong about this. It's not, it's not mercury, so I'm going to go gold. James, I need to hear your answer nice and loud. Gold? Gold it is. Yes. I knew it. That's what I wanted to hear. Let's go to Science Pope Brief for five points. Multiple choice. You know, if you turn on the news today, you can't get away from the fact that everybody is trying to get a COVID vaccination. Everybody right. wants one, but there isn't enough to go around. When people eventually get into their appointment to get their injection in the arm, is it given, listen to these big words and take them apart. Is the injection given subcutaneously, intravenously, or intramuscularly? Okay, okay so, so intramuscularly is, is in the muscle. 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 Venerally is, is into the vein. vein. And can, can you repeat, repeat the, first the first one? The first one, James, is subcutaneously. I'm going to go with vein, vein because, because most vaccines, they come to you, they go to your vein. Same, same thing for IVs. I thought they go into your muscle. Jared, you say what? I thought, I thought they were like, don't go into your muscle, but then. Okay, so he says muscle, you say vein. Nyla, what do you think? Tell us what you think. Um, I think, I think I'm going to go with muscle, 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 too. James, his choice is yours. James, pick one, please. Okay, okay I'll go vein. Because vein. Right. vein has is is directly. Intramuscular. Intramuscular. Jared was right. Yeah. IVs, those are the ones that, you know, sometimes people are hooked up to when they're in a hospital bed to get fluids inside. But boy, I liked how you parsed that. Subcutaneous means beneath the skin. It has to go more than that. That's why people have sore arms after the shot, because it goes right into the muscle. Try this next one for 15 points. There are plenty of ads on television for medicines to help with RA, rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis is a disease that affects these body parts. Uh, the, um, the hands? 
No, no I'm going to go with heart, heart because heart arteries, arteries is in the heart, and, and uh, arthritis. Uh, so, so I'm going to say arteries, arteries actually. Arteries is, arteries. Is it, I can see where you got that from arthritis. Arthritis comes from arthropods. Those are joints, your joints. All your joints are involved in arthritis. All right, 25 points. Let's get this last one, guys. Okay. It's a multiple choice. For the first time, scientists have decoded the genomes of the duckbill platypus and the echidna. Those are odd Australian mammals known as monotremes. All of them have a pouch, lack fur, or lay eggs. Duckbill platypus and the echidna. Odd Australian mammals known as monotremes. They are, or they have about a pouch, they lack fur, or they lay eggs. Weigh in, lay help eggs. James figure it out. I believe, I believe they, they lay eggs. eggs. Cause, Cause last, last time, time I watched one of your videos. videos. So, so you, you said, said that, that the, um, um, one of the, one of the, the answers was a platypus, platypus, platypus and, and it, it said that they lay eggs. eggs. And that you got uh, someone, someone wrote a book. Lay eggs. It and does lay, lay eggs. eggs. You got yourself 25 points. Thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. 25 points. Got it. Good. Let's go to Dateline. Three more questions for you. A scientist by the name of von Helmont was the first to use this word that along with solid and liquid is one of the three states of matter. Gas. Gas, 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 Gas. is right. You got it. You have that I love it. 15 points. Dateline. While the long-delayed James Webb Space Telescope is about to be launched, what other space telescope that once had to be repaired in space, we have a future astronaut here, continues mm -hmm. to send, send back spectacular photos? Jared, what were you saying? I said I, said I, I think, think it's... I think one of them is curious, but I don't remember. Okay. A famous space telescope that's been up there. They had to repair it in space. Still sends back beautiful pictures. It's the Hubble. The Hubble Space Hubble telescope. telescope. Oh. Hubble. I knew you knew that one. Here's your last there, question. There's the game. Hubble telescope. 25 points. It was a Canadian doctor who developed the first of these cardiac devices that automatically helps your heart keep on beating. Sometimes patients have to have these put in inserted by a surgeon to keep their heart beating regularly. What is that device called? It looks like I, 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 I saw this on one of them. It started, started with P. You're on the right track. Yeah, yeah I think it's a pumper. Got it, got it. Um, it's not a pumper. Really? really? No, 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 not a pumper. Guys, it's hard no, on the not. spot to come up with these. It's called a pacemaker. A pacemaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, we know it, we know it, we know it. All right, guys. You had a great game, guys. You end with 180 points. Is that going to be enough to win? We'll bring everybody back out in a moment and announce the win. Boy, we hope you had some fun today. We certainly did because we had some wonderful players here. Didn't you just love how they took those questions apart? They just knew so much about science. We're proud of each and every one of them. Our final tally today, boy, was it a close game. Four foot has 170 points. Longfields has 180 points. So by 10 points, Longfields, congratulations. Give yourselves a round of applause, both for Longfields and for Four Foot. Everybody did a great job. I was telling you throughout the program, put your thumbs up. Give yourself a, some thumbs up there for doing a great job here today. And it looks like we will have Longfields then coming back and they'll be playing Sylvania Woods for the chance to move on to the semifinals. We hope to see you then. I'm Dave Zarin. Until then, we're all going to wave goodbye to you now. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye, everyone.